He was someone who was proclaimed a leader and a guide at the age of two. And many, many decades later, he still inspires millions. I'm joined by His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Many thanks for speaking the times now. It's been a very, very long journey for you. A journey of success, of some setbacks, of courage, of resilience. Have things changed or your way of life or way of thinking changed with changing times? Oh, basically, uh, I am Buddhist sort of practitioner, a Buddhist monk. Uh, and I think the way of training, uh, think entire sentient being, and particularly entire sort of sentient being of this world, and particularly human being, so I think that kind of training, some change, even sort of become a refugee, a uh, new place. But because of this training, uh, not much sort of today, mentally not much change. From one human place, escaped another human place. Basically same. And then particularly India, the historically, uh, uh, the all our knowledge come from India. I often used to describe Indians are traditionally our guru. So I th and then on top of that, India's freedom. So it's not much, not much change. Of course, uh, situation change, but mental attitude. Or mental sort of what's the uh, as the person is concerned, not much change. You in one of the recent lectures spoke about ahimsa and nonviolence, and that you are a stern practitioner of nonviolence. Um, I am going to ask you uh, a question about self-immolations of Tibetan monks. Do you think that is a nonviolent form of protest at all, and do you agree with what is happening? Actually. Uh, as it is, uh, suicide is basically a type of violence. Uh, but then, uh, question of good or bad actually depends on the motivation and goal. I think goal is concerned that these people, not drunk, uh, not family problem. Uh, this is uh, for Buddha Dharma, for Tibetan sort of national interest. But then I think the ultimate sort of the factor is their individual's motivation. If motivation, too much anger, hatred, then negative. Uh, Uh, if the motivation more compassionate, uh, calm mind, then uh, such act also is, can be uh, positive. So that's the f strictly f speaking from the Buddhist viewpoint, like that. Any action, whether uh, violent or non-violence, is ultimately depend on motivation. But the Chinese have said that uh, that the Dalai Lama does not only provide moral support but also now is providing financial support and that they have evidence to prove it. Mm. What do you have to say to the Chinese? And very good. Please come here and thorough check. <laughs> Since 2008 crisis, even the Prime Minister, the former, now former Prime Minister, Wen Jiabo, looks a very nice, very sensible person. He also accused of the crisis, you see, start from India. From, uh, he also, I think, mentioned my name. Then immediately I responded, now, please, some Chinese officials or international media, please come to Dhamsala and thorough check uh, about all our files and also the, those sort of records which 
I sort of want to talk with Tibetan who recent from time to time come from Tibet. So we yeah, are ready, happy to show everything. At that time also as I mentioned. Then last is a several occasion when Chinese accuse us. Then most welcome. Come to here. Instead of saying <laughs> from distance, come here. Uh, will be our guest, most important our guest, and check everything. Uh, right. Most welcome. What do you then make of the new leadership? There has been a change of leadership in China. Are you more hopeful that things will resolve in the near future, or do you think China will continue to move and to take the stringent stand that it takes? Uh, the China, uh, as another totalitarian uh, and closed society. So the system is such, uh, one or a few individuals is they cannot uh, do much. So, but overall picture of China is changing. Uh, today's China compared uh, 30, 40 years ago, much changed. Uh, I think because of the closer uh, relations or contact with outside world and large number of Chinese students study in foreign countries and many businessmen or leaders and their children carry study in foreign countries, mainly in America. Uh, so the in spite of the government restriction, actually it's China, China is opening. Uh, I think because of Deng Xiaoping's sort of policy, the liberalization about economy. Uh, so things are changing uh, for their own future. Uh, and also, I also feel the people of China, most populated nation, uh, and now economically, also you see growing because of more strength. So Chinese, China, can do m much more constructive role on the global level or in Asia. So for for that, trust, respect from rest of the world is highly necessary in order to carry some constructive role. That is lacking now. I think Chinese leaders and intellectuals, I think intellectuals knows that. Now leadership also, you see, uh, have to accept that reality. Then accordingly, you see, they should carry uh, all these sort of activities or policy more transparent way and try to uh, promote rule of law and transparency and so on today, uh, freedom of uh, media or news. These are very, very essential for their own interest. Uh, I always uh, telling, expressing the 1.3 uh, billion Chinese population, Chinese people have every right to know the reality. And once the city, 1.3 billion Chinese people knows the reality, they also have the ability to judge what's right or what's wrong. So therefore, censorship is immoral. Then secondly, the Chinese, uh, or the, uh, or the, uh, the, the judicial, judicial system, you see, must sort of uplift up to international standard. Then millions of poor persons or workers, then, you see, get some kind of effective uh, protection. Otherwise, these poor people in the rural area, really very, very poor. I met a number of the Chinese from rural area. Oh, when I asked, is in their condition, really terrible, like that. Your Holiness, I hope the Chinese are listening and taking note of what you're really saying. You speak of the middle path. You speak of a more moderate approach that let's talk about autonomy for Tibet rather than independence. But there are a lot of young youth Tibetans, young Tibetans who are now seeking independence. What do you have to say to them? You see a gap now and the gap is growing 
Also, is there a difference in your approach of ahimsa and the more radical approach that m quite a few youngsters are taking? Since uh, 1974, we made up, make up our mind and our sort of what should they, policy, uh, uh, the midwife approach, we decided, we set up uh, 74. At that time, China, Cultural Revolution, still there. Uh, so then, 79, uh, beginning of 79, or end of uh, 78, 1978, you see, we received some indication from Ding Xiaoping. So then, since we were already ready to talk on the basis of not seeking independence, but seeking meaningful autonomy, that means the, uh, so the mutually agreeable solution. And then my delegation, or my representative, is Matt Ting Xiaoping, uh, I think February 79. Uh, he said, he said, except independence, anything can be discussed. So our sort of the, the thinking and the Ting Xiaoping statement is s s sort of so the same way. So then, then no problem. So uh, since then, you see, we developed direct contact. Uh, but then eventually, uh, uh, China proper, the democratic movement from many university students, then the overall their policy become hardened. So Hu Yampang dismissed. Uh, so then a lot of setbacks. However, uh, even, uh, eventually, I think 2001, we renewed direct contact. But then, uh, uh, their side, you see, they believe they can solve the development problem through suppression by force. How many years passed? <laughs> I think that kind of policy is completely failed. More suppression, more stronger sort of I say, the determination. That's now oh, everybody now notice. Yeah. Uh, so still, uh, our stand, no change. Now, uh, result of our sort of policy, number of Chinese openly support. Uh, and since 2008, we noticed uh, around 1,000 articles in Chinese language, wrote by Chinese. All these articles fully support about our stand, midway for approach, very critical about their own government policy. Uh, and then also from Tibet, within Tibet, many intellectuals, many sort of, because of the, uh, educated people, some cases I personally met, some cases they are verbal sort of message. So all fully support about our middle way approach. And outside, refugee community, I think 90%, I think 95%, you see, uh, support. We, from time to time, we ask people's opinion. Mm. But then, you see, majority, I think 95%, I think fully support. Uh, and then some cases, initially, uh, of course, want independence, independence. But then when we explain the reality, uh, then everybody agree. Now, except there's a few young uh, people, uh, they, of course, too much emotion. It's quite understandable. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. <laughs> Sometimes you see they, they uh, say too much emotion. So the things, you see, may be easier <laughs> to solve. <laughs> so combination, that kind of view and emotion combined, then you see sometimes the things, unrealistic approach. <laughs> uh, so uh, basically now, t since two years, I already retired. So the, the whole sort of responsibility about these matters, you see, carried by elected political leader, we call Si Kyung. Uh, he also, you see, 
right from the beginning, yeah, he carried this uh, existing sort of city policy uh, stand. So, some people will criticize. Yeah? We enjoy this is different view, expression of different views. Okay, that's okay. Right. So then we'll move a little away from Tibet, maybe. But uh, sticking to China, China has increased its uh, its influence in the region, so to say, and has become more aggressive in the region. Um, in the recent past, if you must have heard that China is building dams on the Brahmaputra, they say it is for irrigational purposes. Mm -hmm. But do you really think it's as innocent as that? Do you think China um, will only do things for such purposes on the Brahmaputra, or there could be more to it? the strategic, um, strategic value of building dams? Now, ecology uh, issue, oh, that is the something uh, beyond the politics. Now, Tibet, some Chinese ecologist, uh, I saw one article wrote by one Chinese ecologist. He found the effect from Tibetan plateau about global warming, he found as much as South Pole, North Pole. Therefore, he described Tibet as Third Pole. So, protection uh, of taking care about Tibetan ecology is uh, something related with global warming. And also, he mentioned the uh, the rate of warming, uh, the rest of the world, 0 0.1. In Tibetan Plato, 0 0.3. He mentioned that. So, and then many Indian sort of ecologists, they also consider Tibet because of high altitude uh, and dry climate. So the uh, Tibetan ecology condition is more sensitive. So we need special care. This is not only India's sort of interest, but also the interest of the China proper. A lot of flood, a lot of sort of, say they, now uh, scarcity of water, these things. You see, the Tibetan plateau, keeping Tibetan plateau uh, ecology is extremely important. Uh, I think uh, major rivers which cover almost whole Asia, uh, from Yellow River and then Sindh, the river, on all the, the, here you see major rivers, you see, all of the source come from Tibetan Plateau or Himalayan sort of the mountains, like that. So therefore, I think around a billion human beings, their life depend on this river. Uh, so therefore, I think, uh, of course, construct dam of these things, also you see, uh, uh, good, but all these constructions must thoroughly research with scientists, uh, if possible, Indian scientists, Chinese scientists, and if necessary, some other sort of well-known scientist, ecologist. You see, come on the spot, study, and without sort of effect or damage ecology, and then use this not only dam, making dam, but also, you see, the mining. And because of cutting forest, these things, I think, uh, uh, like, you see, the uh, three, three gorges, uh, see, these uh, constructed construction without the proper consultation with scientists. So these are, you see, in former Soviet Union, also, you see, happened that. Yes. So now, I think, now, world more civilized, more awareness about ecology problem. So I think these uh, co constructions, I think, should consult with genuine uh, well, scientists, not political minded. Genuine sort of scientists, I think, very, very important. But do you think China has political reasons to build dams on the Sangpo? Hmm? Do you think China has political reasons to build dams on the Brahmaputra? I don't know. You have to research more. I don't know. I think the problem is, you see, just, you see, the hunger or hungry about money. <laughs> so regardless what effect 
about environment that's happened and also human suffering. That's the problem this moment in China proper also. That's why it's a huge gap region to poor. A socialist country, this gap is unthinkable. Now it's a too much greed and without sort of moral principle and immense corruption uh, through corrupt way, this now gap region to poor is now developed. There are major differences. Earlier there was only one. That was the border issue between India and China. Now we see there are more issues because of the, because of the development, because of uh, how China is dealing in the South China Sea and all these areas. Do you see, do you foresee clashes, um, or clashes between India and China in the, in the near future or in the further future uh, between India and China with regards to such such issues in the region, South China Sea, it could be um, the development of the region, or for that matter, how China is helping Pakistan or helping um, build major ports in Sri Lanka, trying to get into Myanmar. Uh, I think for time being, I don't think any danger. Uh, but long run, I don't know. I wish I have some kind of the power to see future, <laughs> then I can, I can predict. Otherwise, that's difficult to say. Of course, they, I think here, uh, India, I think many uh, China experts and also different parts of the world. So uh, I think they have better sort of uh, uh, analysts. I don't know. I think China, as I mentioned earlier, so China uh, changing. Uh, China become even leaders, you see, become, seems become more mature. So, so I think overall, I'm optimistic. Things may go more positive way, more sort of use, more common sense, rather than blind faith about power. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I think the new leadership in China, uh, age-wise, also now younger, and more sort of because of acquaintance with the outside world. Uh, so I think I think uh, hopefully more positive change, but still is it too early to say when Wu Jintao become. Uh, president, uh, many people say, oh, now more sort of hopeful sign, more hopeful. Uh, I also is one of them. At least, you see, he spent some time in Tibet. So at least now ch Chinese president who speak at least a few Tibetan words. <laughs> but then, and then also, you see, publicly sort of what's his slogan is promoting harmonious society. So I really, at that time, really is the op optimist. Uh, but then, time passes. Uh, harmonious seems to now the opposite, <laughs> more suppression, <laughs> like that. <laughs> Any plans of going to Tawang? Because we do know every time you speak of Arunachal Pradesh, the Chinese get concerned about it. And uh, is there any sense that you get from the Indian establishment that you should not be traveling to these areas at this point in time? No, that uh, actually, you see, my last visit, uh, in spite of some sort of as a noise from the other side, the government of India, you see, decided, uh, allowed me to visit there. So nothing happened. And will you be traveling anytime soon again? Uh, without invitation. Usually I do not go to this, this area. So if invitation comes, then I will accept. <laughs> there is another poet in China who was awarded in the United States of America, and they did not allow her to go because she writes against the Chinese government. And she's a very well-known person in, uh, in China. They banned her from going. Are these suppressionist policies of China, and do you think it will last for long? Oh, I see. Uh, oh, this, I think they like Liu Xiaobo, when he received the Nobel Peace Prize, uh, did not allow. 
to receive that. And also Gorbachev, I think. Gorbachev also. Oh. Uh, these things is happen, uh, unfortunately. I think overall is China is changing. So, so these things actually uh, uh, harmful for themselves. Uh, just control is one or two person. Long run, nothing gain. Uh, give more freedom. Gain much more respect, trust from the rest of the world. A little, little sort of, what's it, uh, these, what's it, foolish acts, actually very bad for image of China. Actually, these such sort of acts are actually uh, self-destructive work. You talk about human rights and you profess uh, respect for human rights. I'll talk about a country called Sri Lanka, which is uh, primarily a Buddhist country, but in recent times it has been in use for all the wrong reasons. There are issues of war crimes in the country, of, uh, of torture during war of the Tamils by the Sinhalese, who are primarily Buddhists. What do you have to say about the situation in Sri Lanka? Shouldn't the Sri Lankan government come up and acknowledge that there was torture and at least punish those who committed such crimes? Now, such sort of issue, in order to make comment, uh, as you know, my sort of comment, unless I'm sure they think I won't, uh, I, I do not like to see it make just a mere speculation on these things. So, in order to make sort of definite sort of positive comment on this, first, let me study very detail about the situation. So this moment, I'm not prepared. <laughs> so actually, see, these are not much use. Even I comment, I made some comment here, will not affect that. <laughs> so no use. <laughs> yeah, but we'd like to know um, how you think about human rights per se and about these countries. Let's move from Sri Lanka to Pakistan then. That's, that we know that there have been killings between Shias and I Sunnis. Think basically, the basically, the... Actually, economy problem, some power politics, or some other reasons, people quite often use the name of religion. Uh, Buddhist Hindus, Buddhist Muslim, uh, Hindus, Muslims, and then within the same religion, uh, Catholic, Protestant, Shia, and Sunni, these are very, very unfortunate. Uh, like Northern Ireland. The main reason is political. But use the religious name, Catholic and Protestant. I think I'm quite sure the central event in Burma. Actually, economy reasons. Then you see some people you see, manipulate the name of religion. Once name of religion involved, it's sort of much stronger to manipulate people because religious faith very much related with emotion. Uh, in Sri Lanka, uh, and also some Buddhist sort of movement, a little bit sort of negative towards other religion. But this, I think, mainly, I think, political or economic reasons. I think uh, we should uh, separate the economy issue, just purely pursue the economy way, that way, uh, should not as it use or related with religious faith. That's true. But what do you have to say about the situation in Pakistan per se at this point in time? Very sad. You see, the Sunni and Shia is a problem. The Shia, uh, comparatively, minority, so many occasions, I participated in some Muslim sort of meeting. Uh, I actually sort of express now the minority everywhere, sometimes you see, find some difficulties. So we have to pay more sort of attention, more concern, the weaker section of the people everywhere. So I, I think, uh, for the time being, 
I think all this, I feel the negligence in 20th century with too much emphasis, force, use force. Uh, and completely neglect about moral ethics. So, beginning of this 21st century, also now, the symptom of the past mistake is still now there. Now we have to work hard uh, to, 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 uh, to make a correction. Yeah. So usually I describe this century now should be century of dialogue. The previous century becomes century of violence. More suffering, no solution, nothing happened. So, so now, from our past experience, now, if we try to, if I mean, whenever we face some sort of disagreement, some difficulties, using force is totally wrong. Now we must find non-violent way to solving, solving or facing the problem. So, so I think we should sort of make every attempt, every sort of uh, citizen or entire seven billion human being now must wake up and think seriously about the future of humanity. Believe and implement violence. I think humanity suffer more. There's only, there's no other alternative except through dialogue, try to solve this problem. That's the only way. Do you think, uh, do you think the Shias in uh, Pakistan would be more safer in India? <laughs> it looks like that. <laughs> now sh here in India, uh, recently I met with some uh, scholar who carried research about religious harmony in this country. I met in Jodhpur sometime back. I also visited that area. That sort of scholar who carries some research work, uh, research work, as he told me, he found one uh, near Jodhpur, one Muslim village. The village means at least a few thousand population there, must be there. So he found in that village three Hindu families, no fear, completely safe and very friendly. So that's India. I think that spirit, I think, should be example of the rest of the world. Religion is private business. Uh, should not the religion suppose you see antidote of anger, hatred. If the religion itself create <laughs> more anger more hatred, more division, that's really a disaster. Uh, last two questions um, to you would be one, that you've always said that um, the lineage of the Dalai Lama ends with you. The Chinese could think otherwise. What do you think happens? Uh, what do you think will happen? Chinese showing interest because Dalai Lama also, the, at, at the, then is in the past, also is the head of the political leadership, politi politi politics or temporary sort of power. Now I already retired. So I think eventually the Chinese communist interest about Dalai Lama may be less and less and less because no longer any political sort of role. <laughs> uh, uh, then sometimes I jokingly is telling uh, the people also some Chinese. The, in the past, some Chinese emperor actually, you see, uh, involved about the uh, reincarnation of some Tibetan Lama. Not always. And I think my case, and also the Dalai Lama's case, no involve from Chinese emperor or Chinese government like that. Uh, so, uh, so when is the Chinese emperor involved some reincarnation of Tibetan Lama. They are very close link with religious faith. So some cases